Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I have a few thank yous I want to give tonight. First, I'd like to thank my partner and running mate, Betty Sutton. I also want to thank my wife, Peggy, and our twins, Holly and Danny, for all of their enthusiastic support. I want to thank our marvelous campaign team that inspired me and carried me through this primary season. Thank you. And I want to thank you, the people in this room, our supporters who worked so hard on this campaign, and our supporters across Ohio who worked so, ho so hard on this campaign this spring, and we know you're going to work hard to bring home a victory in November. I also want to thank the other candidates in this Democratic primary race. They led with their hearts, they fought for every vote, and they conducted with me a dignified campaign that respected the voters and debated the issues, and I thank them. Most of all, my thanks to the people of Ohio. This victory happened for a reason. You demanded change, and we heard you, and we want the same. From day one, Betty Sutton and I focused on the kitchen table issues that people across Ohio told us were on their minds, kept them up at night worrying about their future and that of their families, access to affordable health care, getting better education and training for themselves and their children, and above all, spreading out economic opportunity across this state so that no one is left out and no one is left behind. So this campaign is going to be about you. And I think it's about time. You send your tax dollars to Columbus, but they don't come back to strengthen our communities. Instead, they often go to the wealthiest Ohioans who need them the least. At the same time, our state legislature is fascinated with these narrow political fights and ideological squabbles that are strangely disconnected from the needs of most Ohioans. That needs to change, and it will. I congratulate Mike DeWine tonight for winning one of the ugliest campaigns I have ever seen. We now, have, we now have a clear choice in November, and the things we stand for could not be more different. I've spent my entire career fighting for Ohio consumers, retirees, and families. I've taken on powerful interests and gotten your money back when people mistreated you or tried to take advantage of you. Meanwhile, Mike DeWine has been serving those at the top enabling powerful interests to have their way in Washington and now in Columbus. Instead of being an advocate, he let Ohioans be taken advantage of for too long, costing us too much and undermining our future. Let me, let me say a bit more about this choice. I learned growing up what public service truly means. My parents worked throughout their lives on behalf of people with developmental disabilities. Every day they went to work, and it was about raising the quality of life for someone else, putting others first, not yourself first. That's the same quiet and dignified public service we see every day from our teachers, from our police, from our firefighters, from our first responders, from everybody in public service across Ohio. So I've devoted my years in public service to giving people a voice, to standing on their side to see that they're treated fairly, that they're treated with dignity and respect. When I was the Attorney General in the midst of the financial crisis, we worked with people across Ohio to save tens of thousands of homes from foreclosure, 
and we took on the powerful interests on Wall Street who had abused our pension systems, and we got back $2 billion for our taxpayers and retirees. That's $2 billion. <laughs> President Obama named me to be America's consumer watchdog to give people a voice and fix their problems when nobody would listen or give them the time of day. And we took enforcement actions that put $12 billion back in the pockets of 30 million Americans, including many, many Ohioans. <laughs> That's my record. That's how I see public service, making government a powerful force for good. Let's compare that to Mike DeWine's record. He spent decades in Washington pursuing a partisan agenda and siding with the special interests. When the rights of working people were at stake, he was against them. When women's health issues and access to affordable health care were at stake, he was against them. He took massive contributions from the big oil companies, from the big drug companies, from the big chemical companies. He supported their special tax breaks and a trickle-down agenda that never quite reached the middle class. And in Columbus, he's consistently looked the other way, enabling powerful interests to have their way. Instead of advocating for people, Mike DeWine let them be exploited. Let me give you two examples. First, we have ECOT, the for-profit charter school scandal. Over a billion dollars was poured into that school, which failed our children and defrauded taxpayers. The CEO contributed millions to Republican officials, including Mike DeWine, who did nothing to hold them accountable. Now the CEO lives in his $4 million mansion in Key West, Florida, paid for with our money. That is wrong. We also have a Republican House Speaker, former House Speaker, who resigned from office amid an FBI corruption investigation into payday loans. He traveled the world on fancy flights, trading favors on legislation, and what did we get? We now have the worst payday loan laws in the nation. It is perfectly legal in Ohio to charge 594% interest on loans that ruin people's lives. That is wrong. <laughs> These are the same predatory lenders I have fought for years while Mike DeWine said and did nothing to stop them from abusing people. But this November, you can stop them all. Stop them with your vote. Now, Betty Sutton and I have a very different vision for Ohio. We will focus squarely on the issues that matter most to people. We will lead with firmness and resolution. We will fight fiercely for Ohio. And we will work together to get things done. Here is what we promise. We will help our homegrown small businesses grow and create jobs in our communities. We will deliver infrastructure that builds and rebuilds the essential foundations of Ohio. We will strengthen education for all of our young people to have solid paths forward into the future. We will improve health care, protect the Medicaid expansion, and get the resources we need to fight and win the war against opiate abuse in Ohio. And we will listen to our youngest generation and work to reduce the gun violence and to save lives. We will establish criminal justice reform to stop warehousing addicts in our prisons, which costs us dearly and wastes so many lives. We will say no to for-profit charter school scams, no to giveaways for special interests, 
no to an ideological agenda that seeks to divide us. And we will say yes to progressive policies, yes to workforce training, yes to renewable energy, and yes to stronger communities throughout Ohio. <laughs> by listening to one another, by respecting one another, by pulling together in a common cause, we will set an example for America. That's the Ohio way. We can do all of these things, and we must. When we win in November, we will create an Ohio that we can be proud of, one that works not just for some of us, but for all of us. So Betty Sutton and I are ready to fight for that change, but we need you to be ready to fight for change. Please join us in fighting for a better Ohio. Thank you. Trans life.